Weed is legal in Illinois now, in the year of our Lord current, just as it has happened many times in many states where similar legislation has happened, a ton of people celebrated as though they were free at last, but I'm the angry anarchist hair guy, and I can't just let people enjoy things, so I have to do things like, you know, research. And doing that research led me to make statements like, hey, so you're now not allowed to buy and own guns. And every time I said this, with no memorable exceptions, some boomer posts about how I am wrong, citing no laws and no valid counterpoint. Since I'm gonna try and put out short content though, so I can talk to y'all more, here's my short fucking response to this. Because the PolitiFact, Fact Checks, and Snopeses of the world need a little more rage-fueled bipolar asshole in their life. So, without further ado, let's smack the point of this video right in its stupid fucking mouth. Yes, you're not allowed to own a gun if you smoke weed. And no, it doesn't matter that it's legal in your state because the state is a gang in constant competition with itself to fuck you over. Let's hit it. First, let's get this out of the way. The three articles I'll be referencing are technically correct. These states themselves don't ban weapon ownership for weed users. They just capitulate to the prevailing federal laws on the matter and help them get jailed fucking anyway. That's so goddamn much better, right? Wrong. Acting like these gang members aren't on the corner for the kingpin is naive and droolingly stupid as one can get. But here we are talking about a result of people who got exactly that stupid. So what's the claim they uh, debunk? Well, before you celebrate the legalization of marijuana, just know nearly every state that is legalized is also legislated that you can lose your right to own a gun if you're also prescribed it or buy it recreationally. Pod legalization is turning out to be a backdoor way for the government to get you to voluntarily give up your gun rights. Word to the wise. So. Every Facebook mom who shared the debunk of this claim know you're essentially engaging in straw man by proxy. What I mean by that is that this claim is a very specific one, not representative of the wide breadth of permutations the claim that weed users can't buy guns takes. Most people don't phrase their argument that specific way, and claiming they're wrong requires dismissal of their specific points. For instance, someone I know recently posted LOL at the fucking chumps buying hypertaxed marijuana here in Illinois, all hail the black and gray markets. Look up agorism if you want to know more. To this, I replied, and getting barred from legal weapons ownership. He liked my reply, but two other people didn't. One of them simply said, nope, and another went on a diatribe calling anyone public about weed use an idiot a retard, and some other shit. He blames victims of sadism for their lot. Don't be like him. So, how do these outlets debunk this claim? They basically say, but it's not the states, it's the feds! While technically true, that doesn't remotely mean there's nothing individual states can do, nor does it mean that acquiescing to the demands of what amounts to a state's parent corporation is simply accidental. How laughably absurd. USA Carey notes, quote, Federal law supported by administrative orders and court rulings prohibits marijuana users from owning, possessing, or buying firearms. It also prohibits anyone from selling or giving firearms to a person they know or suspect to be a drug user or even the user of a medical marijuana card. Under the Gun Control Act of 1968, any unlawful user of a controlled substance is prohibited from purchasing or owning a gun because... Marijuana is a Schedule I controlled substance under federal law. The U.S. government maintains that there is no way to use the cannabis lawfully. Some say the law needs to change, while others strongly disagree and say it should be enforced. Yeah, fucking bullshit centrism. And Fact Check says, 
The federal firearm transaction form used by federal firearms licensees such as gun shops to determine whether a sale is lawful also explicitly asks about a buyer's unlawful marijuana use and notes that the use or possession of marijuana remains unlawful under federal law regardless of state policies. Making false written statements on the application is a felony that can be punished with up to 10 years in prison and a fine of up to $250,000 according to the U.S. Government Accountability Office. A 2018 GAO report found, however, that the U.S. in fiscal year 2017 rarely prosecuted cases in which firearm applications made false statements on a form and were subsequently denied. Yet, the GAO noted, then-Attorney General Jeff Sessions in March 2018 issued a memo that directed all United States attorneys to enhance prosecution of cases involving individuals who make false statements on the ATF Form 4473. So basically, your state's a big fucking snitch and will alert the feds if you have butt and guns, slapping you with massive fines, disarmament, property confiscation, jail, prison, and possibly asset forfeiture too. Simple as that. Now, your state can choose not to be a fucking snitch, but it's entirely up to them, and there's no perfect way out. To talk about what states can do, here's a Reason Foundation article. While states cannot reverse federal government policy, they have a spectrum upon which they can enforce it. On the more restrictive end of the spectrum, states could require medical cannabis users to surrender all of the guns they currently own, as well as forbidding future purchases. Some local governments, like Honolulu, have unsuccessfully attempted this. On the other end of the spectrum, Pennsylvania has crafted an innovative approach centered around database sharing. The state's Department of Health decided it will no longer share the medical marijuana registry with the state's law enforcement database, JNET. The practical outcome of this policy is that background checks done by firearms dealers will not identify whether or not the person is a medical marijuana cardholder, effectively bypassing the restriction. So, let's be clear, any local effort to decriminalize and legalize is only as strong as the muscular middle fingers whichever state government uses to say fuck you to the feds. And don't think for a second they wouldn't sell anyone up the river who crossed them either. You're one interagency task force away from being totally fucked at any given point. Anyone who's watched my vid against the war on cops myth knows that cops got most of their militarized power over the last century from the drug war. So anything like this is just another prohibitive nail in the coffin of your freedom. But I can't be arrested for having or using it. That's a good thing. You libertarians will never be happy. Laughing my ass off. Okay. Now, all cops have to do is say they smelled weed near a car they saw a gun in. Plant the plant and place the pistol and now you have a case. Or hey, now that Trump raised the national smoking age to 21, they could have just smelled some tobacco around youngins. The possibilities are endless. But here it is, the crux of the whole joint. Because of the feds, the war on drugs hasn't gotten better, it got worse. And to all the people who are going to tell me, but my state would never do that. We're the good guys. If your state's so good, why is it that they didn't include protective provisions in their legalization methods? Why haven't they protected your rights or kept their constitutional oaths? Why have they been so quiet about all this while everyone's been trying hard to debunk all claims similar to mine? Like, oh shucks, we had a regressive legal system that makes ownership and use of a plant scientifically proven to relatively harmlessly elevate your mood and treat your illnesses illegal. And it just so happens that when we made it legal and spammed all your local news outlets with that fact we left out the fact that we now can come raid your house for weapons under federal law and bar you from even being able to buy one above the table. We could make ourselves a sanctuary state or secede from the union altogether in order to protect our residents rights but that would be expensive and dangerous and it also wouldn't give us the power we swear to god we don't want. 
Really, if we could just get rid of this power, we gosh darn would, ah shucks, but it just don't seem likely. And it ain't like this was intentional, luring people in with a promise and not being caged for using something which harmlessly makes them feel good. So as many people as possible would get in on it and post about it on social media outlets which report everything to us so we could justify taking action against these people no matter if they hurt anyone or not because the war on drugs can still be profitable and boost our power even if a drug is legal. Nah. So for now, we'll just tell you that we cross our hearts and promise we won't act on our newfound authority over countless people. We promise. And we're the state. The state never lies. Oh shucks, now we don't. So just remember this. The next time your state, municipality, township, town, or city claims weed is legal now. What legal weed means is more surveillance, more revenue generation, more databases, and not much more freedom. I mean, how hard was it really to meet your guy in the parking lot? Gotta be easier than filling out forms and losing the freedoms, right? And if you have anything that needs protection, the choice might be between legal weed and your ability to protect that. You a cancer patient with a family? Better keep your weed use a secret or you won't be able to defend your family home. You a rancher with a varmint rifle? Better not let anyone know you use a special kind of grass-fed butter to treat your aching back. You an MLG gamer lighting cones all night? Better not let anyone know, or when someone comes to 1v1 UIRL, you might not have your loadout equipped. Get what I'm saying? The state isn't in the business of easing the boot up off your face. Black people knew this when they tried to enact their constitutional right to bear arms in the face of modern day slavery. And every effort to have a gun and publicly bear it was stymied for the fuzz. But they knew the struggle wouldn't be helped by relinquishing arms. Ever wonder why guns are so popular in rap and hip hop culture? They're symbols of freedom. You might not be able to no scope a reaper drone, but that pig on your block who gave people problems might be less likely if he knew there were barrels anywhere and everywhere behind every blade of grass. And he might think twice about abuses he considers. Maybe. But if not, he can preempt that by disarming everyone who lights up. And, not like the drug war has been used an excuse to strip that community's power before. Nah. And like, just saying, we live in an age of unprecedented transactional privacy. Maybe you could get both your weed and your guns in a way which couldn't be traced nearly as quickly, cheaply, and easily. Maybe. Or don't. You might like prison. But hey, if you ask me... Any entity which demands you choose between your right to put in your body what you want and your right to defend it, it's not worth obeying. So here's a thought. Maybe it's time to resist. <laughs>